You're listening to the Orchestra Teacher Podcast. Welcome to the Orchestra Teacher Podcast. I'm Dr. Charles Laux, and I have a great guest this week from Orlando, Florida, uh, Mr. Vinny Conrad, who is the Orchestra Director at Innovation High School in Orlando. Welcome, Vinny, to the Orchestra Teacher Podcast. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, we've known each other for, for a little while here, and um, and then uh, it was a few weeks ago when I saw you on the uh, on the call for the um, state leaders for ASTA, and I was like, I got to get Vinny on here because I know that you started a new school. So Innovation High School, is it a brand new school? It is a brand new school. school. That's Brand exciting. School. Yes. Yes. So tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your your background, your career. I know you were in Texas for a little while and and such, and just kind of inform our, our listeners of, you know, what you're all about. Yeah. Um, so I am um, I'm I'm a native Floridian. I was born and raised in North Fort Myers, Florida. OK. Um, <clears throat> started at a, uh, a an elementary school. Um, that had a, a Suzuki Strings program, and then uh, you know, from first grade on, have just been uh, what was in orchestra, and and then you know, that was kind of. Uh, I, I don't think sports was necessarily uh, gonna gonna work out. So uh, <laughs> it, you know, and what is your I'll, I'll, what is your instrument? Uh, violin okay. primarily, uh-huh. and then um, and then in college, I went to UCF for music uh, music education, and then I also picked up viola um, while I was while I was at UCF, and then got a job. Um, I, I initially thought I was gonna uh, try to go get my master's degree in uh, performing arts administration because I've, I've always kind of loved. I did an internship uh, with the education programs at Orlando Philharmonic. Oh, cool. Um, when, yeah, when I was going to UCF. And then, um, you know, that just that that kind of didn't quite uh, pan out there with the, getting the getting the funding right and the timing right for mm-hmm. that. So um, I started working at Avalon Middle School in Orlando. And then I was there for three years and just uh, kind of on a whim uh, on, on one of these uh, these orchestra Facebook uh, pages saw that uh, this this school in, in Houston, Dory Intermediate School, uh, had a uh, an opening for an assistant director. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of interesting now okay, kind of come in full circle for this because my job at Avalon um, we, we you know in Orlando they call them relief schools and and they uh, w- w- the first year they open they don't necessarily always feel like a relief it feels a little bit okay. more like oh my god the world is uh, the, so the a relief school hard. meaning it, uh, the another school is overpopulated so they open this school to relief some of the yes. okay got it yes and so my position at that school was going to be Maybe, maybe not like uh, halftime at both schools. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that didn't sound the most ideal. And then, uh, it, it, you know, talking about things not working out and then things do work out. Like I, I sent my information out to um, I thought at the time I I was reading it. I, I hadn't heard it pronounced uh, for for three years. Actually, I saw them perform at the Midwest Clinic mm-hmm. uh, my my first year at uh, it, it teaching, and I always thought it was Doer. So so oh, I, okay. D O E R R E. So it's, oh yeah, <laughs> I've seen that school before. I was like, man, this place this place is is fancy. And then come to find out, it's Dory. And, okay. and which is, which is great in its own right. And, uh, yeah, I got a, got a phone call and then an interview and then went out and visited and then somehow ended up in, uh, living in Houston, uh, for, for two years. Uh-huh. 
and um, just an incredible time there, um, you know, working with uh, Rowena McKee uh, and, and the, the Dory family. And then, uh, you know, got to my, my cluster then at that time was uh, Creston Heron oh, was the Creston. director at Klein High School. Yep. Um, and, and his wife, Dawn, was our, uh, the director at our, our sister school, Club Intermediate. And uh, I wow. mean, it's just yeah. like... Talk about, you know, kind of having people put in your life for, for, you know, it was just a special time. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, I mean, uh, I was just telling Bob Phillips um, that, you know, every place I've been, I've run into new people and, and had those connections that have just inspired me and motivated me and, you know, driven me. And I've learned so much. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, that's, that happens, you know, and yeah. you take yeah. that risk to like go somewhere else or do something else. And bam, like now there's all these new people that, um, have impacted you. Yes, yeah. for sure. And, and, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's crazy to think that we were only there for two years because I feel like that, that was such an important, uh, you know, t- time, mm-hmm. uh, in in our careers you know mine and my wife's career and um just met so many people and learned your wife's so also much. a teacher so she was she uh she was a chorus director oh got it um and uh so she taught chorus in uh orange county public schools in orlando mm-hmm. and and now uh she is actually the director of education and community programs for orlando philharmonic orchestra oh wow okay so she, yeah so she did the job uh, that you you thought you wanted <laughs> yeah, yeah it's insane yeah, um but cool. it, it's just Good for it, her. i mean it's it's awesome like yeah. you know it, since we've been back in orlando um this is our this is like our seventh year back in Orlando uh, mm-hmm. now. And and so, um, you know, then coming back, I got my, I started at Lake Nona High School and, um, and was there for five years. And during the first uh, two, two and a half years, I was also getting my master's degree okay. at uh, UCF mm-hmm. uh, with, with Chung Park. Yeah, Chung's at, amazing. Uh, yes, amazing guy. Olaf now, yes. yes. And, and again, I mean, just like, I've, I've just been able to kind of be around and, and, and work and learn from some incredible people. Um, and Makes so now, difference. yeah, yeah, I, I had, uh, I had the opportunity to open this, this new school this year um, and, and uh, facilities reminiscent of uh, Texas, uh, huge okay. orchestra, uh, orchestra hall, if you will. Yeah. And, uh, you know, locker room and practice rooms and, and, and Very all that. Nice. We've got room to grow. And, um, it's been, it's been a great time. It's so been, opening a new school. Tell us, uh, some of your challenges. Cause I know I, I did that my second year teaching. I opened a brand new middle school in Las okay. Vegas. Okay. And, uh, my story is that we, we didn't have instruments for 11 weeks. 11 weeks. Yeah. With no school instruments. So kids had their own violins and violas, but we had, I think it was about 11 weeks. It was terrible. Yeah. And, you know, and all the kids uh, ca- had come from a, a school that they had a beloved teacher. They just adored her yeah. uh, so much. And it was a rough year. You know, it was my second year teaching. So I really didn't know what I was doing yet either, you know. Um, so that was that was my challenge. We're doing rhythms and all kinds, like, tried to come up with everything. And uh, yeah. finally, when the instruments came in, then it started going. And Yeah. But I well, remember that. So, so, yeah, tell us some of your... <laughs> So, so in, in Orlando, we've had, we've probably had two or three new schools open over the last, I don't know, five or six years. Okay. Um, and it kind of, since we've been back in Orlando mm-hmm. and, uh, for, for whatever reason, it was like these schools, when they opened, they didn't have chairs for one of them, like <laughs> their, their music chair. And so they had everything else, but they don't have chairs. And like, that's right. crazy. And then the other school was they have everything, but they don't have music stands. And so I was like, you know what, we're going to order some, um, some portable music stands, like folding music stands. Okay. We're going to be set. We're going to, we're going to have some contingency plans there. And then our instruments were not available. <laughs> okay. So you had, you, and, you had the same, and, a similar thing. So I get in and, and like, when I say brand new school, we, we were not, a, we were, we were supposed to be able to get into the school, like two or three weeks before school started yeah. and, you know, whatever. And then that turned into the, uh, Saturday 
of the pre-planning week. So we were just going to have the normal amount of time, except, oh, well, here's Saturday too. Um, wow. And so, yep. and so then as we were going, it was like, man, you know, we, we haven't gotten any orchestra shipments in and, and, you know, <laughs> they were, they were putting together like marimbas for band and, and, wow. you know, all this other stuff. Yep. And, and so I was like, this is starting to get a little bit uh, worrisome here. Yeah. So um, we just, <clears throat> I was able to reach out to um, some, some colleagues in Orlando and kind of piece together uh, like a borrowed inventory. Right. Yeah. Um, Rental so, fleet. <laughs> and then, it, yes. But I, so I just, I kind of refer to, you know, the new school, like, like groundhog day. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's just this, it's, it's, it's very similar things every single day. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, well, here we have our new borrowed instruments and let's inventory them and let's, you know, fix yeah. them up and make sure they're ready for kids. And, oh, look, our actual school owned instruments are in. Great. Let's inventory them and let's, you know, yeah. get them fixed Double up the and work. get them assigned to kids. And and then let's send back the borrowed instruments. And then let, and so it's just been. Yeah. Uh, You've been busy. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it's you know hope, hopefully now uh, kind of we'll be able to close out December and then uh, you know going into start fresh January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. ready. You're ready for this Thanksgiving break. I know. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, uh, so t- tell me about um, your program. I mean, it's a new school, so are you starting kind of from the ground up, or you have um, small classes or large classes, or what? What, what do you have right now? So that was the the most exciting thing about this school was it, this school is the relief school for Lake Nona High School. Okay. So um, with the exception of my uh, freshmen mm-hmm. and my students in beginning orchestra, every one of these kids uh, was in my, my orchestra Previous. program. At oh, Lake great. Nona. Okay. Um, so they were happy so, to see you in yeah. the new school. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so... With that, though, there's also some kind of weird things. It's like a, a new school, new me sort of thing for some of these kids. It's like, it's like, wow, your personality here is like, you're like weirdly way more dependable than you were at our previous school. And, <laughs> and so and so that's been kind of cool to yeah. see, um, you know, kids like take that on as like uh, a, kind of a soft reset for, yeah, for them for sure. as well. For sure. Um, and, and, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's just kind of weird, like, yeah. you know, kind of picking up and, and, and having basically, you know, kind of the same class, you know, cause they're coming over with all of our similar expectations yeah. and, and whatever. Um, and, and just sometimes it looks a little weird because it's like, man, we're in this, this <laughs> brand new school. And it's, it's, yeah. it's almost like a little fever dreamy sometimes yeah. or, uh, or like, uh, yeah, just, just kind of like, wow, this it seems not quite all real, uh, yeah. just yet. Um, but so, uh, you, you know, and, and then the other aspect of it is we don't have any seniors this year. Okay. So it's just ninth, 10th and 11th grade. Okay. And I didn't, um, really anticipate like how much of a, of a cultural impact, yeah, seniors just have in the building. Like it's a little, it's a little goofier, right? Uh, you know, the yeah. the the vibe in there is just a little bit on the younger side. Yeah. Um, so so, so that'll that'll of, change next year, hopefully. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, God willing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's 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 a good time though. It's, so it's Innovation great. High School is that uh, is it a magnet school at all, or is there any like special programs? Because we have an Innovation uh, here in Atlanta area, and it's like a math and science type thing because that name innovation but i was okay sure. okay yeah that- so we're we're not i don't think we have a magnet program sure. like assigned to us yet okay. we do have um I, I i don't know if if you if you know going back to your orlando days like mm-hmm. the 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 schools that we have had were all kind of like uh, there's probably like 10 schools that were built on the same floor plan. So okay, like yep. if you go to Lake Nona high school or Timber Creek high school or freedom high school or Wakaiva high school or any of those schools, they're, you know, 
they're all basically the same layout. Yeah, no, I, thought, um, I don't think most most of those didn't exist when I was there. Probably, right yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Timber Ridge so, did. I think Timber Ridge was the new school. Yes, you yes. Know, when I was and there, and so and and uh, this school is a brand new um, blueprint. Great. And so we have like really nice, um, you know, dedicated like performing arts spaces for band and chorus and orchestra. And then we have theater classrooms and, and a, a scene shop and oh, a dedicated keyboard lab uh, oh, wow. that, that is designed to be a keyboard lab as well as a dance studio, um, wow. okay. which is awesome. And yeah. then our performing arts hallway is all off of the auditorium. Yeah. So I'm, all right there. There's no walking across. Very uh, nice. But we also have um, culinary uh, facilities there, like right off yep. of uh, the cafeteria, which is very cool. And then we have um, a few different kind of biomedical engineering, like science um, sort of tracks okay. that the kids can choose from there. Wow. So yeah. uh, does having all those extra electives kind of impact uh, your program or music program in general? So... A little bit, like, or yes, yeah. um, and and you know it, it'll kind of remain to be seen how yeah. how that continues there. Um, the we have we have this new like Florida fine arts seal uh, yep. or, or seal of of fine arts, which um, Diplo the yeah. diploma seal. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. were talking and, a little bit about that, I think, in the last meeting. Yes, yeah, yes, we had that and in Georgia so, too. Okay. And mm -hmm. it's, and it's brand new for us this okay. year. And so I, I think we're all kind of trying to figure out like <laughs> how, how we can make that work for us. Um, but these other programs like, you know, with the culinary program or agriculture program or the biomedical engineering, you know, those are all connected to like a dedicated four year track oh, certification okay. program okay. Um, that, you know, the, the goal there is that, kids will graduate with some sort of certification. Sure. Um, and, and, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's going to be interesting there to see how we're able to balance that, like with our curriculum team, um, you know, to make sure that the kids still get to um, don't kind of have that push to, to leave their performing arts class. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully not. Um, you know, it depends on the school I've been at, but, you know, sometimes there's so many elective choices that, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's watered down, but it really does make it more difficult to to draw kids because um, they want to do this or this or this or this. There's so many choices. And yeah, um, yep. school I'm at now has fewer of those, but we do have some high academic uh, type things where uh, the program doesn't allow them to have an elective a certain year. So yeah. trying yeah. to get them to figure out, OK, here's the plan for your four years. Here's how you can do orchestra for four years. But here's what you need to do in the summer. Uh, yeah, each of those yeah. summers to to make it work, you know, but or virtual school yeah. or online yeah. or or whatever the case yeah. may be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. What are some of the uh, assessment practices that you that you use um, in your classroom? Do you have anything that you do that's maybe innovative or special, or um, or what are some of the things that have just worked for you, even if they're what a lot of people do? Yeah. So I. I I've, I used to go the whole route of, you know, like, okay, every other Wednesday we're going to have, um, you know, our, our in-class playing tests and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and, and more often than not, I was just finding that like, it was, it was becoming kind of a source of dread for kids because I wasn't also, um, kind of, kind of helping to set them up. I found a lot over the last couple of years and maybe even since mm -hmm. COVID really of like, we've got to teach kids how to practice before yeah. we can, you know, say like, okay, come back in and learn this because um, that that's not necessarily something that they're, they're picking up as easy nowadays. Yeah. Um, so I've just kind of shifted everything to, we, our, our district uses canvas. Okay. Um, and Great. so more so like I'm teaching kids, uh, you know, at the start of the year, like this is how you're going to record your, your video playing assignment. And then, you know, we'll do one of those every other week or every, you know, once every, every couple of weeks sort of thing. And then I'll, I'll stagger them. So 
so I don't have like I'm not pulling my hair out uh, trying to listen to six classes worth of you know recordings. Yeah. Um, yeah. But how I many, how them- many students are in your program right now? This year I have ninety. Okay. So yeah, yeah. but but with no seniors, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so that that will that will yeah. be going up. Uh, yeah, you know, hopefully there. But yeah, um, but it's, it so takes I, a long time to listen to. You know, I have 170. It takes a long time to listen yeah, to yeah. even just a 30 second sample. By the time you listen and you're, you know, giving them some feedback, yes. And the next one, it's it's hours of uh, yeah. of time. So yeah, it's it's definitely challenging. Yes. Do you record playing assignments as well, or how um, do you do that? Uh, some. Yeah, I do a mix, and uh, th- there'll be some that are recorded. Um, we are dreading the loss of Flip this year because Flip is no longer uh, that. You know, I don't know if you use Flip, the website. Um, to, no, what is it? So it what well it was uh, a great website where you could uh, easily have kids record videos, um, and it would just it, playback was instant, and you could oh, get, okay. go through them quickly. Uh, Microsoft shut it down, and so it's no longer a thing. No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, like, so there's what, a lot they, of people out there like this uh, that are are f- trying to find the the, the uh, alternate solution. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, we have our own homebrew type Canvas uh, program in our district, and um, it's not great with video. So I'm okay. um, still looking yeah. for that solution, and I think yeah. I might have to go and into Microsoft Teams. And Microsoft Teams has the old Flip technology. They they took it off of the website and put it into Teams, so we're going to see how that works next okay. semester. So, okay. it's a uh, we're in the experimental process right now of finding yeah. the uh, the uh, what works best. I know Canvas is great, you know, uh, in general, but we're not we're not using that. So, yeah, it. I mean, or is it, it not? <laughs> it just seems like it's just it's more difficult to. Okay. You know, it's not necessarily as user friendly. As, as all of these things should be. And so it's just, it, it always cracks me up of like, you know, you know, I feel like we're, you know, as teachers always trying to, to find like, you know, what, what can make things easier and more, right. you know, time efficient and whatever, but then to be able to, to find these things, the, the amount of hours of research that you got to put in yeah. and, and testing and, oh, yeah. well, you know, this has a, you know, whatever, like a, a you know, a, a premium wall on it or something. Right. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's challenging. Uh, how about uh, repertoire selection? What are some things that uh, you look at or if you have any like pieces that you've discovered that are, that you love? Um, how, how do you go about, you know, your repertoire selection? And Yeah. yeah. So it, it that, that has been a, a bit of a challenge this year right. um, because we, you know, with, with no seniors, obviously, like the kids are on the younger side of things, Mm -hmm. but then also somehow weirdly, the majority of the, the base population stayed at (laughs) at Lake Nona. Yeah. Uh, And so I have, I have three returning bass players who were all, you know, like they're, they're coming along pretty good, but they're, they're not necessarily at the level of my, my top group Mm -hmm. just yet. Um, And then, uh, on on the other side, on my kind of my my lowest advanced group, uh, the, the, to put a name on them, they don't have a bass player uh, yep. now either. And so, trying to find, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, like uh, like quartet music sure. to, for for them to fit into, or or uh, you know, flexible arrangements and things like yeah. that. Um, so so we're, for our winter concert, we're we're doing a. Um, kind of like a like a holiday festival outside sort of thing so oh, fun uh, yeah, you, yeah you could do yeah. that in florida yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not uh it's not 30 uh degrees yeah. we'll be lucky if it's 60 or, right. uh, or or you know something nice out there but um so so that's a little bit of a less formal uh environment there uh, to to get to that and then um we just had our prism concert uh last week and so being able to put together like a combined orchestra um, th- so we can round out some instrumentation there, that that helps a lot. But I'm, I'm, I'm slowly starting to creep in the back of my mind of like, OK, well, performance assessment is coming up yeah. you know, in the spring. What is that going to look like? And right. so that, that'll that'll be some uh, some some digging there for for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything else you, you think, you know, um things that uh, trends in, in the profession or things you're seeing through ASTA, you know, statewide that um, may be concerning to you or 
that are, are interesting to you? Yeah, well, it, let, let me ask you about, I, I mean, you, you mentioned that, that Georgia has that, that fine arts diploma seal. Is, right. is that what you're saying? Yep. That's what it's so, called. Mm-hmm. So has, has that been in place for a while now? Well, I've been in, I've been teaching public school in Georgia for, this is nine, year nine here in Georgia, and I did four years at the university. Um, but uh, since I was at, uh, at Alpharetta, my last school, yeah, we've had it and it's been a thing. So. Um, so it's been at least, you know, eight or nine years that it's it, at the bare minimum that we've had that. And is it put there in place of, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, like a cer- certification track for things? No, or? they have to do um, so many years of a fine arts class and they have to have a secondary. So whether it's theory or if they're doing music, they have art or whatever it is. And then there's a, um, a community service portion where they do 20 hours, I believe, yep. of fine arts related community service. Okay. And the last piece is a, a capstone project where okay. Okay. Uh, it's, you know, senior capstone. Yeah. So it's kind of um, almost like an independent study usually. Yeah. 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 I think ours is pretty much the, the, the same as that. So it, it's, it's just, you know, I, I get, it's, it, it seems it, it gets a little bit tricky sometimes feeling like there's all these measurables, uh, yeah. you know, put on things and, and, you know, boxes to be ticked off and, yeah. and like, uh, you know, it, sometimes it feels like we're getting further and further away from the ability of just like, well, Hey, these, these kids cannot play F sharp in tune. And so we really have to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a little, it gets a little crazy there. Yeah, do you feel like, uh, and I'm I'm kind of feeling this this year a little bit. Um, are you on a block schedule? Or are you on a traditional schedule? No, so we're on a we have a seven period schedule. Yep. Um, each class uh, Wednesday is our like professional development in service okay, right. meeting day. Yep. So that that day is a shorter day for the kids, and then you have yep. a few hours or whatever too. Yeah, to and finish. and so on a on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, our classes are fifty minutes long. Okay, and that is just <laughs> it goes fast it's just not I'm enough same, similar schedule yeah. and i've uh we have teachers here in our district where a majority of them actually in high school are on the block schedule and they see their kids every day for 90 minutes so yeah, they, so they every one of their kids every day yes for 90 okay. minutes the way that the way that they have it worked out here so not all of their classes are like that but the music class the elective class is Okay, so, so like their their performing arts block like recycles every day. That can, yeah. kind of stays there. Yeah, that is sweet. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, and so you know, I, I was talking to some of our teachers at our all county uh, orchestra um, a little bit ago, and and they were like, "Yeah, we get to do theory, and then we break, and they can work on their own or in their sectionals, and they come back, and it's like." We're just like and they we're come just back like, after I feel like we're plowing through oh music sometimes, and you know <laughs> it's it's a it's a really fine balance of um, have that time for your technical work and your book work, and um, and then you know repertoire and counter yeah. preparation, you know. So uh, it's been challenging. Yeah. For, yeah. 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 It's 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 a lot, and 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 then you know like I I end up inevitably kind of putting that on myself of like, there's got to be a way to, to make sure that we get more of a, of a theory focus in there or, or yeah. more of a technique time. And then like for me now, my kind of biggest uh, like obstacle and, and it, it's not an obstacle <laughs> because like the priority is my family. Now I've, I've right. got, uh, I've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Yes. And you know, when, Two forty-five, three o'clock rolls around. I am just ready to go home mm-hmm. and see my my kids, and uh, you know, so so that kind of puts a little bit of a finite. Uh, right. Like we've got to get that planning done real quick here, and and so it's it's just it's interesting to see kind of kind of how those those priorities shift a bit. Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm right with you because I have, you know, I'm like now I'm kind of on the other side of where you were, and I I was where you were, but with uh, my years, my boys are two years apart, and you know, oh, okay, I'll, great. Next year they'll have a, I'll have a junior, and next year they'll have a freshman. So it's like, the the time is limited, you know. So yeah. it's it's a, it's on the opposite side of, uh, 
I don't have much time left. So yeah. I'm prioritizing yeah. that, you know, and absolutely coaching their baseball and do all all that. Uh, but it's 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 definitely a, a challenge and, and work life balance is super important. And then yeah. as you go through your career, that that can change, you know, that yeah. that work life change. And with your young ones, <laughs> yeah. 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 And it just I'll tell you, it goes fast because you know, my oldest is a huge kid. He's almost six foot. He wears a size 14 shoe. He's a big kid. 14, no, 14. my God. I know. And uh, it's like, where did that come from? You know, and I look at yeah. pictures just, you know, five, six years ago and he's a little guy, but boom, it just happens, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's great. So <laughs> you're you're still coaching baseball though? I am. Uh, we finished yeah. our season about uh, three weeks ago now. So uh, yeah, I'm still doing it. And it's been 11 years and um, pretty much every season for the last 11 years. We do a fall and a spring. So cool. um, we don't cool. play in the summer uh, generally, but now they uh, now they're going to be travel ball. So yeah, they're they're okay. uh, they'll be playing in the summer some. And I, I'm a little bit sad, but I think my coaching days may be coming to a close because yeah. I'm not doing the travel coaching. Okay. okay. And uh, they, you know, my oldest, we did travel and rec ball at the same time, but. Now I think next next year he's going to want to do some umpiring and whatnot and make I some money, it. you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got yeah. to start paying for the car and that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, Man, yeah. living a dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, cool, hey, it's been though. it's been so cool to to uh, get to chat with you a little bit and catch up and um, um, any uh, anything else that you're that, you know kind of thinking about things to. You know, even if it's not just with your program, but, you know, across your state, I know um, you're president of Aston, Florida. And so you're I've noticed you guys have some really cool um, like collaborations with like FOA, your Florida Orchestra Association. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that kind of new or you guys been doing that for a while now? So, you know, I, I, I think it's always kind of. Um, been there in, in terms of like the the fabric of how the 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 orchestra teaching and string teaching is set up sure. in Florida because we have um, you know both of those organizations there and and I, I think uh, it, it, at least in 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 my case my focus is really like how can we you know help each other out and also how can Florida Asta uh, you know maybe supplement or complement the offerings that that Florida Orchestras Association is able to offer mm-hmm. um, just kind of you know, rich in uh, the, the, the strings environment yeah. um, it, here a bit. And so it's, it's, um, it's, it's definitely a little bit slower moving uh, than, okay. than I think I anticipated or, or I was, I was used to, um, you know, just in like, if I think, you know, Hey, I want to try this tomorrow at school. I'll try it tomorrow at school. Right. Whereas, you know, if I say, Hey, you know, I want to get like an online workshop uh, thing kicked off here. Um, th- there's, there's a couple more cogs in that <laughs> machine yeah. of, of like, you know, lining that up. And, uh, and, you know, it, it was kind of a bummer. I, I felt like we were, uh, you know, set up to have a, a great uh, fall conference. We, we kind of joined forces for okay. a fall conference and had uh Crescent Heron lined up. He was going to be our, uh, premier kind of the guest clinician this year and then uh we had a hurricane oh, and yes. it, it, it was canceled the the conference there and so yeah. that's that's a little um you know we, we it's had a some bummer yeah incredible sessions lined up uh, and so try, trying to you know still be able to figure out a way to get that that content out to yeah. people um well maybe next year you yeah question back and Yes. Try again. Yeah. That that that's the plan. I think good, that's the good, plan. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, man. It's 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 just you know it's it's all good work. It's just uh, it, you know sometimes you know it's not be, being able to be kind of control every one of those challenges. Yeah. There is a little frustrating sometimes. For but, sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, it's been so great to have you here, and. Um, uh, I'll let you get back with your family tonight, but um, thanks again for being on the on the podcast. And um, I know that uh, you know you're doing some great things there, and wish you the best of luck in your new school and um, you know continuing to build that program there at, at Innovation. So well, thanks so much for having me, Charles. It's yeah. good talking to you. Will you be at uh, Midwest? I will be at Midwest, right. and uh, I'll be at Asta. So definitely right. see you at one of right. those. 
Um, would love to get down to um, FMEA sometime too. It just it's such a fun uh, fun conference, but uh, it's been a while since I've been there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to get you back. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Well, thanks, Vinny, and for right, everybody out right. there. Uh, thank you for watching the Orchestra Teacher Podcast, and this is uh, the close of episode number seventy-seven. So thanks for watching, and uh, happy holidays. Thank you for tuning in. For resources and more information, visit orchestrateacher.net.